now i request to manimala ma'am to start the webinar presentation today ma'am's topic is environmental consequence of biomedical waste in residential areas ma'am please start your presentation thank you kakulidi uh, thank you very much and thank you everyone for this warm welcome today i am starting my presentation now so my topic of today's discussion is environmental consequences of biomedical waste incinerators in residential area before i start i would like to explain what is biomedical waste first slide please i will go with the help of uh, some slide which will help in discussion so the biomedical waste is the kind of uh, hospital waste the bio means living so the waste coming from the living system living body is known as biomedical waste it is the waste of any kind of waste containing infectious or potentially infectious materials generated during the treatment of humans or animal as for example discarded blood cotton sharps unwanted microbiological cultures and human tissues used bandages dressings contaminated cotton needle scalpels etc now one of the important disposal method of biomedical waste is incineration incineration what is incineration incineration means the burning of the waste at a very high temperature among the various disposal methods of biomedical waste incineration was one of the important guaranteed method previously but it has some advantages along with some disadvantages too which i am going to discuss today uh, now i will discuss about the disadvantages and advantages of the incineration the first slide shows that biomedical waste is the most hazardous waste it needs special treatment to minimize the potential risk of contaminating the biotic system incineration is one of the important biomedical waste treatment process is one of them incineration reduces 10 times volumes of solid refuses but it is associated with gaseous hazardous pollutants like oxides of sulfur carbon and nitrogen incinerator or uh, incineration in done in that device which is used for the purpose of burning out the waste or making them harmless second slide please it is distinguished by high temperature and tight control of combustion condition wastes from industry civic bodies or domestic activities can be incinerated at high temperature waste management is a serious problem in most developed countries dealing with waste is a challenge common to all human societies which threatens terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem although thermal treatment of solid waste that is incineration is an established practice in many countries the oxidative thermal treatment of waste generates a wide range of potentially problematic emissions arguably many of these can be controlled 
to the use of appropriate technology but this is dependent upon rigorous maintenance and management practices to deliver the promise of optimal performance incineration of municipal solid waste which is known as msw produces a range of volatile or gaseous emissions fly ash and dust can carry contaminants from the facility where they can affect sensitive ecosystems of the surrounding area the actual range of emissions depends upon the specific characteristics of the waste stream and engineering considerations such as combustion temperature and the residual ash which badly requires disposal incinerators is one of the greater environmental concern nowadays in healthcare sectors strict source separation programs are maintained it is one of the important techniques for waste removal an incinerator is any device or machine built or used for the purpose of burning out waste or making them harmless it is a special form of waste burning distinguished by high temperature and tight control of combustion conditions this controlled burning of wastes arise from industrial municipal domestic activities and can be in the solid liquid or gaseous state incineration will bring about a tenfold reduction in the volume of solid refuse treated and hence will extend the life of existing and proposed landfill sites incineration is also however associated with the emission of gaseous hazardous pollutants including oxides of carbon sulfur and nitrogen particulate matter dioxins furans fly ash etc it is the thermal oxidation of waste products at temperature excess of 850 degrees centigrade incineration cannot be regarded as a sustainable te technology for the waste management now next slide i will explain the advantages and disadvantages of incineration now if i come to the advantages of incineration next slide at high temperature when the wastes are burned that is incineration is done the wastes containing pathogens or infection and toxin can be removed easily it is a true fact and the incineration ash which is known as fly ash that can be used to produce bricks also so these two are very prominent advantages of the incineration now i will come to the disadvantages of incineration incineration process cannot be regarded as a sustainable development why because it is making a 100% hazard free contrivance is next to impossible is just not possible giving the full guarantee of removal of the infectious waste as well as incineration releases it's the most important point incineration releases into the air a wide variety of pollutants like dioxin furans and some metals like lead mercury cadmium and particulate matter incineration is a leading source of highly toxic dioxins lead mercury and other dangerous air pollutants that threatens human health and environment a medical waste incinerator releases into the air a wide variety of pollutants including dioxins and furans 
different acidic gases which are adversable consequences on public health and environment dioxin is a known carcinogen carcinogen means which can cause cancer dioxin is a known carcinogen that is linked to birth defects immune system disorder mercury is a potent neurotoxin that can cause developmental defects of kidney brain lungs eye and respiratory system incineration produces both toxic air emissions and toxic ash residue which affect the local environment hundreds or thousands of miles away it is an engineered process using controlled flame combustion which degrade the waste materials thermally incinerators reduce the solid mass of the original waste by 85% and the volume by 95% depending on composition and degree of recovery of hazardous materials it has strong benefits for the treatment of certain waste types such as clinical waste where pathogen and toxins can be destroyed by high temperature now i would like to mention some alternatives to incinerations prevention and minimization are widely referred in international laws most specially in bomaco convention which explicitly defines incineration as incompatible with prevention and clean production practices landfill is not a viable alternative as they are unsustainable and environmentally problematic instead of assuming that society will produce ever increasing quantities of waste so waste minimization must be given top priority discards must be segregated so that each fraction can be optimally recycled instead of the current system of mixed waste disposal which affect occupational health of waste workers waste stream disaggregation composting and recycling on the other hand are some of the alternative systems can divert the majority of the municipal discards away from the incineration now uh, next slide i will uh, express here the consequences of public health and environment with the help of some charts or comparative studies dioxin and furans are carcinogenic as i already mentioned they are linked with birth defect immune system and disorder the mercury is a potent neurotoxin related with the developmental defects which can harm brain lung and kidney in this context minamata disease can be given as an example of biomagnification of mercury that also can be recalled air emission from incineration affect the local environment and may affect communities hundreds or thousands of miles away ash residue from incinerator is sent to landfills for disposal where the pollutants have the potential to leach into groundwater level presence of fluoride in toothpaste is banned now after knowing the harmful effects in our body now in next two charts 
I will explain the comparative study of typical emission factors for selected constituents from the incineration devices and their permissible limits of different pollutants in this regard. Now I will discuss the problems of incineration. Industrialized nations are beginning to phase out incinerators, but India is forced to acquire these toxic, outdated equipment. Medical waste contains more plastic per volume than municipal waste and much of this plastic is chlorinated that is they are made up of polyvinyl chloride which is popularly known as pvc the biomedical waste management and handling rules although lay down that no pvc waste should enter the incinerators but this is far away from the reality. Medical waste incinerators do not have advanced air pollution control devices and are frequently run by janitorial staff of the hospital who are not professionally trained. Besides all these problems, there are some occupational problems also, which is known as occupational hazards or occupational studies. From this, we can say that occupational exposure to hazardous emissions in waste workers are due to a old age combination. Next slide, slide please. Occupational exposure to hazardous emissions in waste workers are due to a old age combination of factors of primary importance is proximity to numerous hazardous constituents of waste. Exposures may result in an increased risk of illness such as respiratory, skin and gastrointestinal complaints. Evidence of exposure to cellular and genetic effects resulting from certain chemicals such as stress metal, dioxin, and other organic substances is very strong. Next slide, please. Although increases in risk of gastric, esophageal, and lung cancer have been reported in separate studies of waste workers. Now, in this regard, I will give some case studies like a lack of landfill space, tighter regulation to restrict the quantity of waste going to landfill together with environmental problems with old landfills have driven municipalities in many countries to look for new methods of handling waste. Presently, 60% of waste generated throughout countries in the European Union goes to landfill. This situation is made worse by the growing amount of waste being generated. For example, total waste production in the uh, European countries rose by nearly 10% between the 1990 to 1995, and a further 20% increase has been predicted to occur by 2010. In Slovakia Republic, Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania, and Poland, economic growth may lead to a doubling of municipal waste generation. 
one of the methods being chosen to deal with the current waste crisis is incineration a method which is promoted as reducing the volume of solid waste thereby lessening the burdening of landfill however incinerators are not the solution to the waste problem indeed they are symptoms of non existent and ill conceived policies for the management of material resources in a world of shrinking resources it is irrational to let valuable resources go up in smoke and doubly so when the smoke is known to carry persistent and other hazardous chemicals incineration cannot be regarded as a sustainable technology for waste management and has no place in a world striving to change towards zero discharge technology individual who work at waste incinerator and who live near incinerator has suffered from increases in the rate of mortality as well as many other diseases and effects that diminish the quality of their life moreover a prestigious scientific body has recently expressed substantial concern about the impacts of incinerator derived dioxin release on the health and well being of broader population regardless of the implementation of maximum achievable control technology the convention for the protection of the marine environment of the north east atlantic asia entered into the force in march 1998 and covers the 15 states of the northeast atlantic region at the osper meeting held in sintara they claimed that the commitment for the cessation of release of hazardous substances within one generation will be discharged emissions the loss of hazardous substances which is an alternative to the incinerator now uh i will describe the adoption of zero discharge how that can be maintained or how that can be reached the aim of zero discharge is to halt environmental release of all hazardous substances although it is sometimes discussed as being simple plastic or even impossible it is a goal whereby regulation can be seen as resting places on the way to achieving it we live in a world in which our resources are generally not given the precious status by industry and agriculture which they deserve in part this has led to the creation particularly in industrialized countries of disposable society in which enormous quantities of waste including avoidable waste are generated this situation needs to be urgently changed so that the amount of waste produced both domestically and by industry is drastically reduced ways to help waste reduction include the use of economic instruments and environmental taxes the use of these measures is supported by the ec and the number of environmental taxes are already in place in several european countries however more action is presently required to stimulate the change needed in reality 
current levels of recycling in European countries. Coming to the conclusion part, current levels of recycling in European countries vary considerably great instances of the occupational hazards caused by some systems. Now, despite the new guidelines from CPCB, that is Central Pollution Control Board, on design and construction of the incinerators would be permitted Incinerators still continue to be installed and some even is in residential area which threatens public health and ecosystem. Photochemical devices or ray treatment may be used instead of incinerators to make biomedical waste hazardless through preventing hazardous emissions. Waste minimization must be given to top priority. Discards must be segregated so that each fraction can be optimally recycled instead of the current system of disposal practices. Uh, in the next slide, there is a picture of incinerator so that you can understand the machine and the work procedure of the incinerator easily. Here, I would like to emphasize on a fact that air and water quality of resident surrounding Keolatola and Nimtola crematory area is so polluted that people residing in these places suffering from critical heart, lung, eye problems. From several survey reports, it is noticed that they can smell the burning of human bodies that is a, from anatomical waste, mainly in the rainy seasons when the humidity of air is very high, so that air of that area cannot flow to maximum heights above 800 meters. As our environment is suffering as a direct result of an inadequate waste management framework, which needs to be drastically overhauled in the immediate future. Waste policy in the developed countries widely accepts the hierarchy of waste management to be waste prevention, reuse, recycling, thermal decomposition with energy recovery. In spite of these general consequences and a growing coherence of this hierarchy in policy lines, individual member of the state function directives and the majority of wastes is associated with the incineration policies. Importantly, these are the methods which also entail the highest and most serious environmental and health risk. A move towards a waste policy aimed at reducing Health effects should put more emphasis on prevention and reuse. Presently, waste policy is not a founded upon health data. Fortunately, the available data on health effects from waste management do not conflict. And in important aspects, even coincide with the hierarchy proposed by the several reports from different health sector area. For example, 
waste prevention is deemed to be the most important no waste equals no health effects followed by reuse and recycling despite this the lack of consideration of the environment and human health is clearly visible in some new policies of the government for instance regulations put in place for incineration by the authority with national limits on this issue are based on what is technically achievable rather than on health and environmental data the precautionary principle acknowledges that if further environmental degradation is to be minimized and reversed precaution and prevention must be overriding principles of policies it requires that the burden of proof should not be laid upon the protectors of the environment to demonstrate conclusive harm but rather on the prospective polluter to demonstrate no likelihood of harm the precautionary principle is now gaining acceptance internally as a foundation for strategies strategies to protect the environment and human health current regulation for incinerators is not based on the precautionary principle instead it attempts to set limit for the discharge of chemicals into the environment which are designed as safe in the current regulatory system the burden of proof lies with those who need to prove that health impact exists before being able to attempt to remove the cause of the problem and not with the polluters themselves based on the knowledge regarding the toxic effects of many environmental chemical pollutants we have now reached a situation and indeed there are some time ago where health studies on incineration have reported associations between adverse health effects and residing near to incinerators or being employed at an incinerator these studies are warning signs which should not result in government inactivity but rather to decisions being taken which implement the precautionary principles there is already sufficient human health and environmental contamination evidence to justify a phase out of the incineration process based on the precautionary principle to wait for further proof from a new generation of incinerators from an already harmful and dirty technology would be balanced discarded for the environment and human health as our environment is suffering as a direct result of an inadequate waste management framework which needs to be drastically overhauled in the immediate future at the end i would like to conclude on a note of robindranath tagore panchabhute dogdh kori diyeche bishwe chhoray thank you with this line i would like to conclude my presentation and at the end i would like to thank modok trainer academy with my heartfelt gratitude for giving me this platform 